Hey guys, so today, as you can see, I'm filming in a different location. I am filming at my mom's office, hoping to get some better lighting, so let me know what you think. And today I'm gonna be filming my throwback Thursday of my August favorites from 2013. And this is basically a flashback Friday because I am a day late, so I do apologize about that. If you have never seen one of these throwback Thursday videos from me before, I will have my playlist linked down below. And basically I am just reviewing the items that were in my favorites video two years ago letting you know whether they are still favorites today or whether I have found something that I like better. My inspiration for this series was Kristen Game. I will have her channel and her playlist linked down below. Make sure you go check her out. I will also link down below the original favorites video in case you want to see how terrible I was two years ago compared to now. And I will also list and link all the items in the description box. So my first item was the Beauty Blender, which I no longer have. I really love that sponge for foundation and concealer. What I am using currently is the Real Techniques Miracle Complexion Sponge, which I also really love. I love the flat angled side for really packing on my foundation and the pointed side for concealer under my eyes. This is a great sponge. I do feel like the Real Technique sponge has changed. I bought a sponge when it first came out and it got really ratty so I purchased a new one and I feel like it is more stiff than the original so I don't love that. I do think that the Beauty Blender works better than the Real Techniques. I am considering buying a new Beauty Blender whenever Sephora does their VIP sale and I can get it for 20% off because that sponge is incredible for foundation. I really, really enjoy it. Mine got some kind of bacteria in it and just got really gross so I had to throw it away so that was a bummer but I definitely do still love the Beauty Blender. I want to purchase another one and if you are on a budget, the Real Techniques Miracle Complexion Sponge works really good as well. The next product I had mentioned was my e.l.f. Acne fighting foundation in the shade porcelain. This is the second lightest shade in the range and this is a bit too dark for me. The lightest shade is way too pink. This one has more beige undertones. So recently I have just been mixing my Hard Candy Glamouflage foundation and porcelain in with this one to get my perfect shade match and this is an incredible foundation. This is probably my favorite drugstore foundation that I've tried so far. This gives you medium buildable to full coverage. It has a satin finish and it holds up against my oil pretty well. This also has ingredients that are supposed to help heal acne. It has salicylic acid, witch hazel, camphor, tea tree, and aloe. If you are someone that has oily, acne prone, sensitive skin, I think you will enjoy this because it is not going to break you out. But if you do have dry skin or normal skin, if you use this multiple days in a row, it might dry your skin out a little bit. Also, there are only like six shades in this range, which is a big bummer, but if you can find a shade match for you, definitely pick this up. I absolutely love this foundation and I have a couple in my collection that I want to go through first, but I would definitely repurchase this even though it's not my perfect shade. I love the formula so much I don't mind mixing this. So this is definitely still a favorite of mine and I would recommend this for anybody with combo or oily skin that really likes that medium buildable to full coverage. My next favorite was a, another e.l.f. product. That would be the e.l.f. HD Powder in Corrective Yellow, which I have completely used up. And I was using this to set my cheeks, which do have a lot of redness. So this yellow tone did really help to neutralize it. And also I have very oily skin, but my cheeks are normal. So this powder did a great job of setting my cheeks without making them look too dry or cakey. So this is a nice powder, but it isn't my favorite anymore. My favorite loose powder would hands down be my NYX Mineral Set It Don't Fret It. It comes in two shades, light medium and medium deep. I obviously have light medium. This is even more finely milled. This does an incredible job of filling lines and pores and just setting your makeup, helping you look matte without being cakey. This is an incredible powder. I wish they had more shades to choose from, but this powder formula is a million times better than the e.l.f. HD powder, so I would definitely repurchase this over the e.l.f. My next favorite is another e.l.f. product. I think I placed an e.l.f. order either this month or the month before, so there were a ton of new things that I've been trying out. This is the e.l.f. 
contouring blush and bronzer cream in St. Lucia. So we have the blush shade and the contour shade. Now I do have a video demoing this that I will link for you guys. And this is a really, really nice cream blush and bronzer. It definitely is more of a cream formula. I would not say it is cream to powder. So keep that in mind if you don't like straight cream products. I am definitely more of a powder person, which is why I haven't used this in a while. So the undertone of the contour shade is a little bit more red, which I really like for my skin tone. I do also have this Sony Kasha cream bronzer and the lighter shade is way too orange for me and it does not work at all. This works much better because it does have that red tone instead of that orange undertone. And this is a really nice neutral dusty pink blush as well. I think that if you are wanting to experiment with cream blush and bronzer, you absolutely need to get this. It is only $3. The formula is great and so are the colors. So I wouldn't really consider this product a favorite or a must have, but I do enjoy it and I am happy to have it. I feel like this is a very unique product to get from a drugstore. And if you are interested in trying a cream blush and bronzer, definitely recommend you guys pick it up. I do really like the formula and the colors. So apparently I was on a cream product kick in August 2013 because my next favorite is a cream product as well. This is the Benefit What's Up Cream Highlighter and it is a beautiful champagne shade and I believe this was the Sephora 2013 birthday gift along with a Benefit Their Real Mascara and I still have a ton of this left. Um, it is a really really nice formula of a cream highlight. The champagne shade shows up nicely on my skin tone. If you are deeper than me, it is going to be a little bit more intense. This is more cream to powder, which I do enjoy. This isn't too, too wet. It is definitely not as wet as the e.l.f. contouring blush and bronzer. So the formula of this is really nice. I do enjoy this product and I would recommend it, but I just don't use cream products. I haven't reached for this in a very long time. So this is not still a favorite of mine. My next item is the last e.l.f. item I'm going to mention in this video. This is the e.l.f. Eyebrow Kit in Ash. The e.l.f. Brow Kit comes in four shades. Ash is great for blondes. Light is great for redheads. Medium is great for girls with brown hair. And the deep shade is great for girls with black hair. So what you get in this kit is a colored wax and a powder. It also comes with this dual ended brush. You do have an angled side and a paddle shadow brush side. So as you can see, I have used the heck out of this. I've actually hit pan in two different places on the wax. So this is not something I'm currently using because I have so many brow products in my collection, but this is definitely a great brow kit, especially from the drugstore. And I actually do enjoy the brush that comes with this. I will show you the brushes that I use with this instead, but you can definitely make it work with the brush. And the powder is so pigmented and I use them both together. First, I will line and fill my brows with the gel and then set it with the powder and that works perfectly for me. So the brush that I use for the gel is the Revlon Dual Ended Smoky Eye Brush. I really think that the angled side of the Revlon brush and the e.l.f. are very comparable. I just like this one because it has a longer handle. So I will use this brush to apply the wax. And then to apply the powder, I use the Sigma Angled Brow Brush E75. This I mentioned in my favorites as well. So I absolutely recommend this kit. It is not still a favorite of mine because I'm not reaching for it, but I definitely am happy to have this in my collection. The shades are perfect for my blonde hair and my blonde brows. I would definitely recommend this for anybody that is looking to try a brow kit. So the next favorite I mentioned was an eye base palette combination. I'll start with the eye bases. These are two Milani Shadow Eyes pencils that were released in the Naturally Chic collection, which was limited edition, but these shades have been made permanent, which is amazing because I consider these to be holy grail bases of mine. I love the formula as well as the shades. So the first one I have is the Milani Shadow Pencil in Almond Cream, which is a matte light cream shade. Amazing base that I like to use on the lid with this look. And the other shade I have is Cafe Au Lait, which is a matte light medium brown that I like to use as a base in the crease. And the palette that I use with those bases is the Balm's Meet Matte Nude, which has nine matte neutral shades. I use the matte white called Matte Malloy on my lid. I use this matte peach shade, Matte Sing, as a transition shade. And I use this light medium warm brown matte rosin in my crease. I love the formula of these shadows. You guys may know that I 
don't tend to reach for my pre-made palettes except for this one. This one is amazing. I can't believe I have not hit pan on those shadows yet. I've definitely made huge dents in them. This is my favorite pre-made palette ever. These shadows are very pigmented and blendable without being overly blendable like the Lorac Pro palettes or the Kat Von D Interstellar palette. This is everything I can ever wish for in a matte palette. So the bases and the palette are definitely still favorites of mine. I would consider these both to be holy grail items. My next favorite is an eyeshadow brush. This is the Sigma E25 blending brush, which I use in my crease every single day. I used it today. I love that this brush is tapered and pinched at the ferrule because it helps me to apply the product very precisely into my crease, which I love. It really helps keep my look from getting messy. And then I will use a separate brush to blend it out. This is my holy grail favorite crease brush. I love the Sigma eye brushes so much. I definitely think they are worth the money. So then I had two lip combos and out of the four products, I only have have one still and the combos were using the Revlon lip butters and the Revlon super lustrous lip glosses so unfortunately the Revlon super lustrous lip glosses were discontinued and then they came out with a new formula new packaging and new shades all the old shades are done with except for pink pop I refuse to buy them because Revlon messed up a good thing so the first lip combo was using the Revlon Lip Butter and Strawberry Shortcake, which is a light, medium, neutral undertone pink. I have since finished this up in a project. And the lip gloss that I paired with it was the Revlon Super Lustrous Lip Gloss in Coral Reef, which was coral, but it was leaning more orange. So when I paired this pink lipstick with that orange lip gloss, it created a really beautiful pinky coral shade. But those two formulas together were so creamy. They melted together perfectly. And I would not consider those products a favorite anymore because I'm kind of over the Revlon lip butters. I'm actually trying to finish them all up and I don't plan on repurchasing them. And like I said, the Revlon Super Lustrous Lip Glosses were discontinued and I also had them for a while so I threw mine out because they were getting kind of old. So I did really love that combination back in the day. I don't love it anymore because I can't wear it anymore. So my second lip combo was using the Revlon Lip Butter and Gumdrop, which was a lilac shade, and pairing it with the Revlon Super Lustrous Lip Gloss in Pink Pop, which was a medium pink shade. And when I put those two shades together, it created the most beautiful pinky lavender. It was very, very wearable. I really have loved lavender lips for a long time, so I did really love that combination, but I believe the Gumdrop Lip Butter has been discontinued. My next Next favorite was a nail polish. This is Color Club's Harp on it, which is a silver holographic. I have not used this in a while, but I definitely need to. This is opaque in two coats, and it does actually have a very strong holographic look to it, especially when you're in the sunlight. So when you are driving, Make sure you pay attention to the road because it's definitely easy to get distracted by this nail polish. I think this is about $10, which is a bit expensive, but it is a really cool effect polish that has become more common these days but not really in mainstream brands mostly in indie brands and because it is a silver hollow it is going to be probably the most intense out of any other hollow shades that come in these hollow hues lines so i definitely do still love this nail polish i need to wear it more but i would recommend that you guys pick this up if you're looking for a holographic polish and i had some random beauty favorites that were not necessarily makeup related the first is the tangle teaser which is the most amazing hairbrush for anybody with tangly hair i cannot tell you how many gobs and gobs and gobs of hair i would yank out of my head every day using a regular comb but the tangle teaser somehow how works wonders. I absolutely love that brush. Definitely recommend it for anybody with tangly hair. And along with that, I had discovered my holy grail conditioner. That is the L'Oreal Ever Pure Smooth Conditioner that smells like rosemary mint. That is the one that is formulated for color treated hair. So that became a discovered product in August 2013 and it is my holy grail conditioner to this day. I have repurchased it over and over and over again. I never try anything new because that is the best I've ever found. It actually acts like a deep conditioner even though it's only a regular conditioner which I think is very very impressive. Absolutely love that and would recommend it to you guys. My next favorite was a 24 count acrylic lipstick holder. I actually had ordered that from Amazon. I will have a link for it down below. I can't remember how much it was probably a little bit overpriced but it is perfect it is three rows of eight which I love it fits perfectly in my deep Alex drawers 
I love that for my lipsticks. I am trying to limit myself on my lipsticks to only that one organizer not going over. If I want new colors, I need to get rid of some or use them up. Absolutely love that. I love acrylic makeup storage. I think it is so clean and beautiful looking. So definitely still love that. My last favorite was a mesh letter holder that I purchased from Walmart, which is what I use to store my palettes. Now in the past two years, I have gotten a lot more palettes. So my whole palette collection does not fit in that letter holder. But what I have been doing is putting that letter holder on my vanity. And that is where I put the palettes that are featured in my monthly makeup basket, all the ones that I want at easy access in my face. So I remember to use them. So I am still using it and still loving it. So guys, that was my throwback Thursday for August 2013. I want to apologize that this is a day late. If you guys do these videos, please let me know in a comment down below so I can go check them out. I would love to hear your thoughts if you have tried any of these products. Thank you so much for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye, guys.